Ooh. This is homemade bread. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you hey okay? In your neck are When we dry them up, too cool. Now go too deep, you know. Yeah, yeah, fair watch Joe, you know. Our troops, see that? Apple cider vinegar and our troops. Come up at right, make them get saturated in the gravy and all of that. On today's episode of the Jamaican Cooking Journey, I'll be sharing with you how to get a bread done in your very own kitchen, making you feel real special and all of that. Now, I have a bread video that I've done on my other channel. I'm going to leave the link for you in the description. I did use my KitchenAid mixer because it makes it so much easier. But today, 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 no, I'm going to do it by hand. Hands all clean, I'm going to be showing you the difference. So, I've made bread before I even owned a KitchenAid mixer. I used to make bread with my pear hands. It takes a little work, to be honest. To be honest, but I think it's really rewarding. It makes you feel good. Now, I have here <coughs> some bread flour. I have in here, I'm trying to get a bread for this size, but I think it's about nine by four and a half or something like that. I leave the measurement of the pan for you because with the ingredients, it has to do a lot with the measure measurements, the proportionate measurements, it has a lot to do with the size of the pan. Okay, so you can go check on that bread video that I use a KitchenAid and if you feel free, prefer to use a KitchenAid if you have one. If you don't have a KitchenAid, this is for you. Let's roll. Inside here, I have one teaspoon of salt two and a half tablespoons of brown sugar. You could substitute that with some nice, good raw honey. I have two and a half cups of bread flour here that I use, bread flour. Bread flour is higher in gluten than all purpose flour. So I'm gonna mix it, throw it right in here. So I'm gonna mix it a bit. I'm gonna get my salt all mixed in right here. No. I'm going to put my yeast in. Try not to put your yeast directly on the salt. Put my yeast in and I'm going to give it another little mix. Now I have here some melted butter. You could use oil in that other one. I thought I did use olive oil. So I am putting two tablespoons of melted cooled butter now, once you put that, this yeast in, I'm using instant yeast. If you're using the other yeast, you know, you'd have to mix it up, give it a little time and to see that it's proofing to show you that it's um, working. Make sure that your yeast is in good working condition. Now for this, we're going to need some warm water, not hot to say, because I'm going to use my hand in here. So you're going to use, and this is really hot, so I'm going to dilute it. I'm going to use enough water, I'm going to dilute it to come to a soft ball to it, soft. So you don't want to use the water too hot that your hands going down in there, because if the water is too hot, it will kill the action of the yeast. Yet, if it is too cold, the yeast will not work. Okay, so you can go a little more. It is your cup, your hand, you know, first time people that go so and feel I think it's a little bit too warm. The temperature, if you're using your thermometer, it should be about 109 to about 112 there about. Perfect, perfect temperature. You put it on your hand like this, just like how you'll be making your baby's bottle. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mix this. Make this everything that we have here get all incorporated when i give it a little mix i return okay we are gonna put remember i said a soft dough soft and i think we're gonna need more water okay you could use milk here too 
you know i'm making a regular ardo bread not fully just a regular bread so if you want to get like you know so i say i use there about a cup and a half or a cup, a cup and a quarter to a cup and a half of water so we are going to stop right here and i'm gonna start using my hand i'm gonna put everything together i'm gonna get it out here you might see a little shaking in the video family because my ear my surface here it's really shaky so we so sticky it is that is why most people would um prefer to use the kitchen aid but i'm showing you if you don't have a kitchen aid you can now at this point you see how sticky it is it is sticking to my hand i have to use my hand to knead this dough until it stops sticking the kitchen aid does that better because your hand will not be in it but as I said, I want to show it to you without your kitchen aid. Now, you're going to need a little flour, not too much, because you're going to have to be working this dough with your hand. You're not going to put too much extra flour to get the dough all tough, because it's a soft dough. So, we're going to start working the yeast now. You know? So, it's up to you. You're going to, at some point, need to get both hands in. And this is going to take about 15 minutes. The more you knead, the stickier hand is going to get. So you have got to knead with your hand. Continue kneading, scraping around, moving around until you have stickiness. Let's continue to work this dough. You're going to work until all the dough is off your hand and it is becoming sticky. Let us continue working. I'm going to work a little and as it starts start, it start to get a little less sticky i'll come back and show you just working with the hands this it's still sticky but look at it coming off the board easier picking up what is on the board more so we are going to need some more because we have got to do about 10 to 12 minutes of this with our hand until all that stickiness um stops until all this dough stops sticking to our hand I'm gonna be doing this right now you see it but I'll do it and come right back to you. And as I get more and more that the stickiness is, um, you know, less, I'll show you as I go along. As you can see, I did spread a little flour out and I used up a little, not a lot. And I'm not going to use all of this. So all of this, the kitchen here will do it for you. You got to work this dough work it until it starts sticking to your hands work it some more in your face let you see and you can see that the elasticity is coming out but it's still not there you don't want it sticking to your hands This is as good as your hand gets it. It's not sticking to your hand. See, I still have a little flour leaf. You need a little flour as you start kneading to, el to help you to make it reach your consistency. But you're not going to use a lot. You had like a pinch at a time turning around. It will get there. It takes a little bit, I did tell you. So I want you to go watch this video. Go watch the other one that I'm going to leave the link. Make your decision which one you're going to need. You're going to use. If you don't have a kitchen aid, you won't be able to use the kitchen aid. No other mixer will be able. And when I say kitchen aid, it don't have to be a kitchen aid brand. I mean this type of stand mixer with the dough hook that can work it. But before that, I was making bread every single weekend. Two, three. When my son was a little baby, I would have done it. Camera girl has seen me doing it like this for the first time. And... Making bread, I think it's very refreshing. Look at this. As you, the more you work it, look at this. 
You see what I'm talking about? That ball dough. This texture. This consistency. Now we are ready to leave our bread to proof. I've got a little vegetable oil. You can use. You're going to grease the side of your bowl and the bottom. So you can use whatever you want. You can see that probably when you watch that video. You'll see that I used. Um, and I'm a little bit out of bread. Because I was doing a little exercise. Real elbow greasing right here. So I've greased this. And I'm going to move the dough around in there, turning it over. Because I want, when it's, we come back, we're going to leave it for one hour to rise. And we want, when it come back, we come back, it's not sticking. So that's the a reason we grease at the dough. Beautiful texture here. Lovely texture. This is how it looks. And I'm going to leave it. Kim, our girl, loves to do plastic wrap. So I might just do the plastic wrap. So we're going to leave this to proof somewhere that is warm. It's cold now. The time is cold really now. So put it near your heater. Um, heat up your oven a little. Turn it off and then put it in there. One hour. And after that, we'll be back to show you the next step. So it's that time. Cooking family. Like one hour. If you're in a colder... Um, temperature you might want to leave it for a little longer so you know and if you have reached let me stop here to say if you have reached thus far in this bread making video you can give me a thumbs up remember to make sure that you're subscribed and click the notification bell to the right there press the option that says all you want to punch this down this punching down is not for fun it is to release the gas that the yeast has built up in the dough Okay, so now that you have done that, you see how easy it comes out? It comes out this easy because we did grease it. Remember to follow the steps that I have done. So you want to just give it some gentle, gentle little top beans now. We have got our pan here, all greased. Try not to add too much flour at this point, if, necess if not necessary. So we're going to give a few rolls. And I might have done it different in the other one, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> so when you press it out like this, you see this is like the length of your pan. Just a little guide, just a little guide. So, you know, you can do it other ways, you know. But if you watch other bread videos, you can just decide which one you want. On. So you want to press it out, press it out a little. So this also is helping to get extra gases released from the dough. And you want to come and do a little tight, really tight, tight, tight. Put down some pressure, put down some pressure, put down some pressure. Also, this is taking out the excess. You can work with your pan at all times. Hmm? Fold over and you want to seal. You want to seal this right here. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Make sure you have this pinch and fold it over, pinch it, and make sure it is properly sealed because we're going to leave it to rise again. Hmm? To the length. Don't mind the up. It is going to rise, come up. So once you make it the very length of your baking pan, and like this, it will be forced when it's rising. Instead of going out, it will be forced to come up. So, very gently, as it is, you want to tuck it right in there. Give it a nice little straighten up if it so desires that inside there get a nice little fix up and we're gonna leave it again this is when i like to put on the plastic wrap you know right on there to keep the moisture in it's gonna be proofing now for about another 45 minutes so look at this you want to make it have that nice shape in there yeah so as it rises in this second proofing instead of going out it is forced sides are here to come up so this is when I like to um, put my plastic wrap 
And this is how easy bread making is, family. So right here, at this point, I'm going to be putting on some plastic wrap on this little bread right here. And we have a little very, very uninvited guest inside my kitchen because my door is open. Yeah. Plastic wrap is on. I can easily well see what is happening. I'm going to leave it at the very same spot that I left to prove for the very first time. Right under my range hood right there with the heat coming down. And my ring light also gives me some extra heat because of this weather here in Jamaica now. It's a little chilly. It's at the norm extra heat. So I would say another 50 minutes. And as I go along in my kitchen, I will see what is happening. We're going to let it rise until it comes almost to the edge of the pan. I think that should happen within the next 50 minutes. Then we will come back. And we'll proceed with making our homemade bread. So after our second rising cooking family, this is what it looks like. So you want to gently remove your plastic wrap. And if you have, if you try it and at this point your bread is not looking like this, that simply means just one single thing. Your yeast is not active. Okay? You could also, you could... Use the instant or you could use the other one that you got to prove for a few seconds or minutes. Now, I've preheated my oven to 380 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees to 200 Celsius. Okay, I'm waiting on the that, um, go out, that alert there. So what I'm going to do, I have a little melted butter here. And I'm going to gently, very gently, you can't just, it's really gentle at this point. So you want to brush it in, brush it on very gentle and it look like say my um the brickles of my brush they are just too coarse for my bread am i putting too much there so we just want to gently brush it to give it that nice color and we're also gonna do a little extra brushing when it's baked we're waiting on our oven to give that preheat signal and then we're gonna leave it to bake it is very delicate at this time which it should be the dough is soft and all like that so this is what is happening in the next clip i'll be putting my bread in the oven there we go all preheated 380 degrees right up there we're going to put it in right here in the middle of the oven for the next 35 to 40 minutes should be ready within the 35 though okay now so family our bread is out First thing, this is what we want to do. Now, I want to say something to you. Have you ever been to the bread shop, the supermarket, when you're choosing a bread, you see some of them top brown like this, some white. I naturally don't go for the one with the white, white top. I always go for the ones, and if I ask any of my family, my kids are dad to go, then no, no say, them for, um, select the one with white. So our bread is out jump up in there and stick so what we are going to do you know our wire rack has got to come into play yeah now unlike the cake you don't have to leave it on in the pan on the wire rack all you need to do is just to turn it out on the wire rack be careful though Ooh, really hot Ooh. What do you think about that camera girl? It looks brilliant. Really, really, really hot. Let me show it to you that you can see. So soft and all of like that. What you need to do right here, we're going to make sure as hot as it is, we're going to use some extra melted butter. Now you can go, we're going to brush it. It is to get it all softened and we are going to leave it to cool. This is so beautiful. Making bread is very, very, very refreshing in any kitchen. Homemade bread. The whole process for me, it's really... What's, what's the word, camera girl? Help me with that word. To the sides. Therapeutic. Therapeutic. That wasn't, that wasn't such a big word. But I would say, relaxing. yes, it's relaxing too. Yes, it makes you feel good. And most of all, it makes your kitchen, wow. Our garbage truck is passing, family. Our door is open. So I'll give it a few minutes to cool down. 
And of course, I've got to come and eat bread with you. I'll catch you in the next clip. So it's about that time, YouTube family, that I get to eat a slice of homemade bread with you. Still really warm, relatively warm. So I'm going to take the end part off. I like the very end part of the bread. I don't know about you. Please comment and tell me in the comment section. Ooh. This is homemade bread. Sandwich bread. Look at the softness. It's not cool. It's not properly cool. So, who doesn't like warm bread and butter, camera girl? You don't? No, I do. You don't? I do. Okay. So, I like a good lather of butter on my bread. And my bread is relatively warm still. And as I lather, my butter is like just simply melting. From my kitchen to yours. From my Jamaican kitchen, to your family table, to your plate, and most of all to your stomach. This is your homemade bread. Try it. Follow the steps and you will feel so, so proud of yourself. Mm. And across the bowl. It's just like warm. The butter is melted. Mmm. If you have liked this video, I'm still. Remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. Remember to make sure you're subscribed to the Jamaican Cooking Journey. Remember, I'm going to leave the link for the one that I did in the KitchenAid mixer, in the mixer mixer. But honestly, this one, I think I've enjoyed more. Remember to look in the comment section, check the comment, check the description box for all my info that you'd like to get on to me. Remember to be you, do you. Most of all, love you. Some homemade bread in your kitchen.